The final item of business today is the members' business debate on motion number 14914 in the name of Chick Brodie on HGV driver shortages in Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Chick Brodie to open the debate. Seven minutes, Mr Brodie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. May I firstly thank uh, all those who have remained for the debate. Uh, and, and say how pleased I am that we're having the debate this evening. Uh, I'd like to, before I start, thank uh, three particular people, uh, Jeff Campbell, uh, Martin Reid and Willie MacArthur, uh, Willie who first raised the issue with me some 18, 20 months ago and also with Jim Eady. Uh, Presiding officer, the road haulage sector in Scotland is a major part, a fundamental part of the Scottish economy. Its net contribution is over £5 billion and it contributes more than 5.5% of the total Scottish GVA. It is also a vital component in helping deliver Scotland's exports, which in themselves are a key uh, component of Scotland's economic strategy, where we are on track to double our exports over the period 2012 to 2017. It fuels the retail market. It secures manufacturing output through delivery of raw materials and components to industry. And it also harnesses indigenous industries like farming uh, and forestry as an example. There are an estimated 300,000 HGV drivers in the UK, of which Scotland has approximately 30,000 or should have. But, but, it is estimated that driver shortage in Scotland may be as high as 11,000. This is not, as I say, just a Scottish problem, but a, a fairly large one as far as we're concerned. That shortage is compounded by data in a recent study by Manpower, which found that these roles are among the five hardest roles to fill in the job market. And because of the demographics, 16% of drivers are due to retire in the next uh, four to five years, with only 1% of drivers under the age of 25, and combined with an appallingly low a recruitment rate. Approximately 1,500 drivers have to be recruited each year in Scotland to address the shortfall, and this ticking economic time bomb is there. Contributing to this fact is that the sector is heavily dominated by men, with only 1% of women employed in the industry. These overall statistics aren't new. This has been a problem that has just, hasn't just sprung up. It's been steadily worsening over the years. The Sector Skills Council have estimated at times there have been six, six vacancies for every one driver. And today there is no doubt that we have a serious issue of driver shortages in Scotland. Now I believe there are three main areas, presiding officer, that we need to tackle. And again, I emphasise the support and information I've had from the industry and those who live with the challenge day in, day out. Firstly, skills agencies. We need to ensure our skills agencies understand the scale of the problem facing the sector and have a skills strategy to tackle this issue. There are also many sectors within the HGV sector, such as forestry, livestock and fuel movement, all of which have unique skill sets uh, and all of which contribute to the overall challenge. All drivers now require the compulsory certificate of personal competence, the CPC, and also must carry a driver qualification card which involves 35 hours of periodic training every five years. The CPC training can cost up to £3,000 per driver, and we need to, to, together, to ensure that these are properly funded and that drivers remain and grow with the industry. Following a specific meeting last month, that following months of prior discussions with SDS, it will be carrying out an extensive consultation, SDS will be carrying out an extensive consultation with the sector to assess the scale of the problem, the skill sets required, and what are the barriers to uh, recruitment. The invitation uh, to tender for this consultation is now on the Public Contracts Scotland portal, which if it closes, believe it or not, tomorrow. The consultation involves talking to the Scottish Road Haulage Group, Road Haulage Association, the Freight Trade Association. It also involves talking to the highly significant food and drink industry and other key sectors in Scotland. We should have that skills strategy by the end of March. Modern apprentice schemes, career development loan opportunities and working with existing training providers will all be features or principal features of the strategy. Secondly, the Logistics Academy. We need to ensure 
there is a pipeline of drivers coming through into the industry. As I said, only 1% of the industry is under the age of 25. The principles of developing young, Scotland's young workforce would be enshrined in the development of a logistic academy in Scotland. And to that end, we will be encouraging discussions to take place between the skills agencies, the schools, colleges, university sectors to ensure we have a robust pipeline of professional drivers. Presiding officer, the driver training agencies and employers, you know, the ones that I've met, are very ready to play their part. The Road Haulage Association, of course. Mark McDonald. I'm grateful to the member for giving way. Uh, in discussions I've had with hauliers in my constituency, one of the issues they've highlighted is that it can often be more expensive for them to obtain insurance for drivers under the age of 25, despite the fact that they will hold all of the required qualifications. I wonder if the member would agree with me that insurance firms need to be part of this discussion as well. No, uh, Check uh, uh, Mr McDonald is absolutely right, and that was part of the conversation. I'm sure he will address that in his address, but the insurance companies have to be a, a bit more realistic in what they're trying to achieve in the long term. The Road Haulage Association has been working alongside Job Centre Plus in the initiative Driving Britain's Future, which gives unemployed people first-hand experience of the industry. But, presiding officer, we require a rash of such initiatives. Lastly, there is the barriers to recruitment. Addressing the issue of driver shortage will require a, require a multifaceted approach. We have talked about the availability and funding of training and development of a logistics academy, but to underpin that, underpin these is the urgent requirement to remove the barriers to entry to the industry. We need to ensure funding for training allows people from other industries to be upskilled. And Mr Macdonald made his point, a very valid point regarding insurance requirements. In the current financial scenario and restrictions across the board, this sector, because of its general importance to all economic sectors, should be seen as such when it comes to funding. One significant possibility might be that those leaving the Army and the Navy and the Air Force and who have appropriate skills might be upskilled, and we will be looking to dis discuss these opportunities with the Cabinet Secretary for Veterans. We also need to ensure that more women can and enter the industry and more easily. The development of a logistics academy can play a part, major part in this, as can the flexibility of working and working hours for all drivers. And lastly, Presiding Officer, I wish to close by commending, as I did at the beginning, those in the industry. I mentioned Jeff Campbell, Martin Reid uh, and Willie MacArthur and there were many more. I want to thank them for their part in addressing this issue and raising it and thank them for their guidance and knowledge uh, shared with me over the many meetings I've held with them. This is an issue which I'm sure will be addressed fully and over a period of time and I'm delighted that SDS will be producing a skills strategy by the end of March. The road haulage industry is without doubt a major contributor to Scotland's economy and help us drive forward our exports. We should, and we must, and we will support it. Many thanks. I now turn to the open debate speeches of four minutes, please, and I call Angus Macdonald to be followed by David Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Um, at the outset, can I uh, submit my apologies as I'll be unable to stay in the chamber for the whole debate as I have a meeting to attend and I'm hosting the James Watt celebration in the garden lobby. Um, I'm grateful to Chick Brodie for bringing this debate to the Chamber, uh, as I feel it is important that this pressing issue remains on the Scottish Government's radar until we can see a steady stream of new entrants into the haulage industry. I'm also grateful to my colleague Christian Allar for tabling his motion in Parliament during the first National Lorry Week last October, which highlighted the Love the Lorry themed events organised by the Road Haulage Association which allowed pupils around the country to learn more about the haulage industry. I have, of course, raised this issue in the Chamber myself on a number of occasions in the past, in the past two or three months, and I am grateful to the Transport Minister and the Cabinet Secretary for Fair Work, Skills and Training for their responses. Local hauliers in my constituency have come to me to highlight their concerns regarding the very real problem of finding suitable drivers from home and even from abroad, with the Road Haulage Association indicating that there is a shortage of 45,000 suitably qualified HGV licence holders in the UK. Ian Mitchell, the Managing Director of John Mitchell Haulage in Grangemouth, employs over 100 uh, people and has a large fleet of trucks working around the clock. However, he has highlighted to me the difficulty of attracting new drivers to the industry. He came to me with a proposal that is now being actively discussed with Skills Development Scotland, in which he would be willing to pay half the cost of training around 12 young drivers a year if SDS matched the funding, and I am hopeful that something uh, can come of this proposal, which seems a sensible way forward and an ideal solution towards helping to avoid a crisis. 
Was the cost of training at uh, with the cost of training for a Class 1 HGV LGV licence at over £3,000, it is prohibitive for any future drivers, particularly if they are paying out their own pocket. So a scheme which contributed a percentage of the costs of training drivers would, he believes, help to address the serious problem of declining numbers of drivers. Now, in addition to meeting with Mitchell Hollage, I also met with local livestock hauliers, uh, stewards of Bone S in my constituency, who are also experiencing significant difficulty in attracting new drivers into the industry. Livestock haulage is, of course, a specialised work, and not everyone can drive a livestock transporter. Farmers and livestock hauliers have to be trained and pass tests to prove that they are competent. Uh, however, that has led to a shortage of qualified drivers, with the average age of livestock hauliers now believed to be 55, and I think that is the figure uh, for the general haulage industry as well. Despite high salaries, in some cases in excess of £40,000 a year to, to key men, more are leaving the industry than joining. Uh, they are being enticed to other haulage jobs by competitive salaries and a generally cleaner environment with non-livestock haulage. Uh, and none of the stress attached to moving livestock over long distances and trying to meet what many regard as impossible timetables. Uh, as we know, livestock hauliers are required to observe uh, working time directive rules, which can be hard to do when working with auction marks, abattoirs, and of course the animals. Livestock hauliers can only drive a maximum of 90 hours in a fortnight eh, or run the risk of, 50, of hefty fines. And of course during the hectic autumn sale or back end season there aren't enough livestock hauliers to move all the animals in the limited number of driving hours that are allowed. So much as I hate using the word as I think it's overused in this chamber, I do feel we are facing a crisis and that's the view throughout the haulage industry. As I mentioned earlier, figures from the road haulage associations show that uh, the UK is currently 45,000 drivers short. 35,000 drivers are due to retire in the next year, excluding those who have had to leave for medical reasons or have found another job, and there are only 17,000 entering the industry annually. The RHA has called for the UK Treasury to make £100 million available for industry funding through a targeted time-limited scheme, and hopefully the UK Government is listening and will progress this. However, in the meantime, the Scottish Government can play its part and I was encouraged to receive confirmation from the Transport Minister before Christmas that Skills Development Scotland is exploring a range of options to address the driver Could shortage. Could you draw to a close, please? Indeed. We all recognise that the road freight industry is the lifeblood of Scotland's and the UK's economy, so we all must play our part in ensuring we literally keep Scotland moving. Thank you. Thank you. I now call David Stewart to be followed by Joan McAlpine. Um, thank you, President Officer, and could I uh, congratulate Chick Brodie? Um, for securing tonight's uh, very important uh, debate. And I share um, all of Trick Brodie's uh, conclusions that the shortage of HGV drivers poses a very real and present threat to both the Scottish and, indeed, the uh, UK economy. I've got a particular interest, uh, presiding officer, as part of the ICI committee, that we spent some time taking evidence uh, on freight, and that involved meeting a number of large hauliers. And I, so that's why I can echo uh, Chick Brodie's uh, well-researched speech uh, th this evening. Uh, if you look around this chamber and indeed Parliament as a whole, presiding officer, most of the fact what you can see from the glass in my hand uh, to the chairs that we have here have been delivered by a lorry at some part of the journey to get here. In fact, more than 85% of all goods uh, uh, bought in the UK are carried by a lorry at some stage in the supply chain. And as previous members have rightly said, uh, the Road Haulage Association, which represents, of course, more than 8,000 uh, haulage companies, state there is a shortage of between uh, 45 to 50,000 drivers uh, in the UK. And without which, uh, if we don't get these drivers, the industry will grind quite literally to a halt. Now, the statistics per side officer are very stark. And according to the Office for National Statistics and the Labour Force Survey, 62 per cent of truck drivers are 45 years or older, and the sector's average age is 53, 13% of which are over 60. But most worrying for me, only 2% of drivers are under the age of 25. So that means, as we have heard from Chick Brodie earlier, that a fifth of the HGV driver workforce will reach retirement age in the next 10 years. And whilst there has been a drop of 45% drop in the number of individuals obtaining, obtaining the HGV licence in the past five years. So, in short, thousands of older drivers are leaving the industry, and there are too many barriers. And Mark MacDonald, uh, who intervened earlier, was quite right to touch on the point of insurance. That's certainly been echoed to me uh, in the Highlands and Islands, 
with the numerous haulage companies contacting me about this particular issue. So that's a barrier, preventing young people uh, replacing them. So we have to do something about these barriers. And this, the biggest issue is simply getting truck driving into the radar uh, of school leavers. And a Westminster equivalent of our cross-party groups described career guidance within the logistics sector, and I quote, as limited or non-existent. And back in 2009, the UK government lowered the minimum age for driving a truck from 21 to 18. But it seems that, in my experience, and I could be wrong in this, President Officer, it only seems to be family firms that have taken advantage of this change. Now, that's, that's unsurprising, given that the cross-party group I mentioned earlier said, and I quote, insurance is the major cost to the industry. Prices are so high that companies are presented with a disincentive to invest in young people to become drivers, and so they're missing out on the formative years of a young person's career path. So furthermore, I've spoken to Niscree Training Services. It's a company that undertake HGV driver training in De Vries. The manager of the training facility said to my manager that the whole situation was, and I quote, a catch-22. There is funding available for apprenticeships uh, geared towards those of appropriate age, but they have to be employed by a company before they're eligible for funding. And what use is that is if a young person wanting to enter the HGV driving profession, but you're not employed? Where are you going to find the £3,000 to fund yourself through that HGV driving and test? And my colleague Rhoda Grant uh, mentioned to me earlier, she was in touch with a Western Isles company that didn't want to be named, who said they exactly the same problem, said it's a huge disincentive to try and take on uh, young people. But I would highlight the good work the Road Halls Association is taking a lead on, and it's mentioned in the motion, um, the Driving Britain's Future, the new project with Jobs Centre Plus is an excellent initiative. So in conclusion, President Officer, I uh, congratulate Chip Brodie again for this. It's a very important issue for Scotland uh, and for this Parliament. Many thanks. I now call Joan McAlpine to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to speak today, and I'm also grateful to my college, Chick Brody, MSP, for bringing this debate to the Chamber and congratulate him for that. Uh, the value of the logistics industry to Scotland's economy has already been highlighted, and as our economy improves, driver shortages are likely to cause difficulties for Scotland's supply chains. So it's imperative that we need to address this uh, skills gap now. Um, the sector is extremely important to my region in particular in South Scotland and I'd like to take the opportunity to recognise two Dumfries based companies, Nithcree Training which has already been mentioned and Curry European uh, for their efforts in encouraging more people to train as HGV drivers and I spoke to um, the leaders of both these companies um, uh, in advance of this debate to get a first hand um, view on what the challenges were and how to overcome them. In Nithcree training, I spoke to the director, Elizabeth Campbell, uh, to find out more about the shortages. And uh, she, as others have mentioned, highlighted the cost of HGV training, which can be prohibitive. In fact, she said that um, taking someone from scratch up to a, you know, being trained in every kind of HGV and every kind of load could cost around £5,000. Uh, in both certificates and licences. And uh, people in this chamber, she, she raised an issue, people in this chamber will know that I'm a great supporter of, of the arts as co-convener of the cross-party group on culture. But I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Elizabeth was rather frustrated at hearing of a colleague, uh, or a friend's uh, relative, who had embarked upon a college course in photography. Uh, and was able to access £6,000 by the way of bursaries and grants. And, and she found it very, very frustrating that absolutely nothing wrong with doing college courses in, in photography. And it's great that the government is obviously focused on college courses that have outcomes. But here we have a skills gap um, in the HGV industry. And certainly Elizabeth Campbell at Nithke Training did feel rather frustrated that you could access this kind of package to, to train in photography, but not as an HGV driver where um, there was a big gap. Um, over at Curry European, they do have an absolutely excellent apprenticeship scheme uh, for young people um, and, uh, and take them from school and have a great relationship with the local schools. However, Tom Barry, the owner of Curry European, when I spoke to him about this, said that while they are absolutely committed to their apprentice scheme and will remain committed to it, the cost of insurance was very uh, prohibitive 
and uh, they were looking at uh, any assistance that they, they could get in that. And Mr Barry also mentioned that for a lot of their recruitment will come from people changing career. And I think what should be mentioned is that HGV driving uh, is a good career. It suits, it suits many people. It doesn't suit everybody, but for many people, it's uh, very well paid, um, comparatively much higher than the average. And uh, but to actually move into the into that career, you have to take 18 weeks off, uh, as well as finding uh, as well as finding uh, the funding, as I mentioned before, for the licence and the training. In addition, Mr. Barry mentioned the burden of CPC, which is of course a UK government issue, and he also mentioned, um, which I thought was interesting, is that the UK government have taken away tax breaks for drivers who are on overnight uh, journeys. And uh, this isn't a, a huge amount of money, but um, it, it kind of makes a big, big difference in terms of uh, the attractiveness of the career. And uh, he was looking to put more pressure on the UK government to address that particular issue. Um, and as others have said, it's, um, it's affecting the economy as a whole. Mr, Mr. Uh, Barry employs over 300 people at, uh, at, at Curry European and he said that because of the shortages he was actually having to turn work away uh, and if you're turning work away and if you can't it means that the companies that need to get goods to people aren't getting them to people in time so it's having an effect on the whole economy and uh, not just the road haulage industry and for that reason I'm, I'm very keen to highlight it in this important debate and, and hope that we can all work together uh, to find a solution for the industry and the economy as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I now call Jamie McGregor to be followed by Christian Allard. Oh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I too congratulate Chick Brodie on securing today's important debate. Um, it's very important, particularly for my region of the Highlands and Islands, and indeed for the whole of Scotland. And I also acknowledge the good work Chick Brodie and other members have done to raise the profile of this issue, and I'm pleased I have been able to work on the subject as well. And at the outset, I paid tribute to the first-class efforts of those involved in the Scottish Road Haulage Group, particularly Jeff Campbell and William MacArthur, both of whom have vast practical experience in working in the haulage sector and who have such a passion for the industry. They've helped brief interested MSPs, and I hope they will continue to do so, as will the RHA, who has also done such good work. And I want to commend all those HGV drivers who work so hard in Scotland to keep our shops, our businesses, our hospitals, our schools, our universities, and all our other services supplied with goods. They transport agricultural livestock, timber, fish, and farmed fish, and allow companies to get their products to the market across Scotland, the UK, and worldwide. And as a livestock farmer myself for many years, I relied so heavily on that industry to move cattle and sheep to markets often under very difficult conditions on small roads. And they helped also, the drivers used to help with the loading and the unloading, and then at the end of the day, they had to clean the lorries. I know how hard these people work. Their job is unending, but they're often unsung heroes, and that's the point. They are the lifeblood of the whole economy in Scotland, and we often take them for granted, but we should be very grateful to them. And I also know the sector is continuing, continuing to face this winter's particular challenges of bad weather and flooding, which has caused transport disruption, and the continuing ban on HGVs using the fourth road bridge has piled extra costs on hauliers. And the blocking by landslide of the A83 on the rest and be thankful has proved uh, a prob extra problems for hauliers, especially those from Kintyre. As Chick Brodie has said, the contribution of haulage to Scotland's economy is massive. But the sector is facing these significant problems in recruiting new drivers to the sector. And this is vital uh, for the long-term future. Over 38% of drivers are age 45 or over. So we need to be working to address this challenge now and with great urgency. In terms of young new entrants, I support the industry in calling for a structure to be in place to promote HGV driving to school pupils at secondary school before they are lost to other sectors. Um, it's a great industry to come into. There is the particular difficulty that youngsters have to be 18 before they can gain their HGV licence. How do we then keep 16-year-old school leavers interested in the sector, and how can we support them in that period until they are 18 
and can gain a license. This is really important, I think. And funding for skills and training must also be flexible enough to support those in the 25 plus age group too, who many hauliers are seeking to attract as drivers, not least as employance insurance premiums are less onerous than with the younger drivers. This includes those who are currently self-employed and who are seeking training to help upskill, retrain or transfer their skills. I want to see Skills Development Scotland offer as much support as possible to the self-employed in these categories, as well as, um, as to those who are unemployed. Uh, and to conclude, presiding officer, I'm delighted this debate is taking place as the road haulage sector is intrinsically important to almost every aspect of the Scottish economy, and we must ensure it is underpinned by a sustainable number of drivers as we go forward. There's much work to be done to prevent a potential recruitment crisis, and so I urge ministers to engage now with the Scottish Road Haulage Group and the RHA and to respond to the specific suggestions and ideas which they have about tackling the challenging uh, challenges that we've heard about this evening. Thank you very much. Many thanks. I now call Christian Allard to be followed by Mark MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. And I would like, first of all, to congratulate uh, Chief Brodit for getting cross-party support for a motion. And I know he got a lot of help from uh, m m many people along the way, and some of them are listening to the debate uh, tonight. Uh, it's an industry close to my heart, the road haulage industry. Yes, President Officer, I came to this country 30 years ago to open a road haulage office in Block and Road in Glasgow. I literally came to this country in a truck and I was more than an office manager then, as I took every opportunity to drive one of our 143 Scania on the small highland roads to collect uh, farm salmon for export. And I was very pleased to uh, contribute to the export effort from Scotland 30 years ago. Uh, you have to believe me, uh, President Officer, the highland looked fantastic aboard a truck pulling a 38 tons load of fresh fish. Uh, but I did not employ women at the time, and, and when we talk about recruitment, it's so important uh, uh, that we concentrate on, on both genders. And uh, women drivers, uh, there are a lot of them on the road, and maybe we don't realize this. A lot of women are driving one specific type of truck. Uh, uh, if you don't believe me, next time you, you drive on, on Scotland Highway, uh, have a look. Every, most of them, if not every, AGV horse boxes are driven by women. So that really uh, uh, kills a myth that some uh, women cannot uh, drive trucks. And of course, there is television too. Uh, I don't know if you are uh, watching on Channel 5, the Ice Road Trackers is a reality TV series where Lisa Kelly is an American tracker who has been featured in the television series. And she, she was the only female tracker featured in the series, but now Maya Seba uh, joined her uh, in, in, the, in the last season. And uh, prior to her appointment as an ice a road tracker, Kelly worked as a school bus driver and trained as a tracker because it looked interesting and it is very much an appealing for women uh, to come into the industry. Uh, the condition for driving are absolutely no, not ideal close to the North Pole uh, for any truck drivers. Lisa and Maya are the living proof that driving AGVs is something that can be easily mastered by women. There are now more and more women AGV drivers coming into this industry every day and choosing driving as a career. AGV driver, AGV driver training centers are noticing uh, an influx of women entering and wanting to train in category C and C and E licenses. The industry used to be mostly ruled by men. However, it is changing and many women are now involved behind the desk and behind the wheel. Uh, the number is rapidly increasing the amount of opportunities out there in the industry at the moment uh, that uh, job vacancies in Scotland are, are, are quite, a lot of them, as Chick said, and across the UK. Uh, attitudes are changing also as women are fully qualified and have completed the same training as their male counterparts. They know what they are doing. As the uh, Road Haulage uh, Association is set to launch a new campaign and resource centre to highlight the logistics work done by women and the opportunities available for women entering the sector, the campaign will be called She's uh, RHA. Uh, She's RHS, its primary aim is to encourage a national debate about the role of women in the sector, showcasing a variety of successful women and encouraging a forum 
uh, within which female workers can swap experiences, information and achievement. She's our HA will be launched uh, soon, south of the border. And I would like members and the minister uh, to join me to encourage the Road Haulage Association to bring the She's RHA campaign to Scotland as soon as possible. Uh, I'm sure that we will receive cross-party support in this parliament. Uh, I was pleased to back the first ever National Lottery Week organizing, organized by the RHA, as uh, Angus MacLeod reminded the chamber uh, earlier. I uh, received cross-party support on the motion on this event, and parliament noted that the aim of National Lottery is to raise the profile of the, the industry. There will be the Love's Lorry theme camping again this year. And I, I can tell you what I participated at Peter Dewey in Aberdeen. And uh, uh, as soon as somebody uh, show uh, young school children how to work the horn, uh, it was impossible to hear ourselves. So it's quite a very good event. So the voice of the industry needs to be heard. And I thank Chick Body again for bringing it to our attention. This is an industry open to all genders, a vital industry, an industry for the future. Many thanks. And now call Mark MacDonald. Th thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I congratulate my colleague uh, Chick Brodie on securing this debate. And um, listening to Christian Allard's speech when he was speaking about uh, media depictions of female lorry drivers, I was struck uh, while thinking about this debate and thinking about the issue around female lorry drivers growing up watching the cartoon Pigeon Street, where one of the main characters was a female long-distance lorry driver called Clara. Um, so perhaps what we need is more media depictions uh, of female drivers to encourage more women to consider that it is a career uh, choice uh, that is uh, viable and open to them. And more broadly, I think what we need to do is we need to ensure that where there are media portrayals uh, in relation to the haulage industry, that they are positive media portrayals, because we know that in the past there have been some issues around negative portrayals and the impact that that can have on attracting people into the industry. Now, I want to couple, cover a couple of, uh, of specific areas uh, in, in this debate. And the first is that... Um, is around opportunities that can arise from difficulties in sectors. We know that the haulage industry is currently going through an, uh, difficulties uh, and I believe that the, it requires uh, somewhere in the region of 1,500 drivers a year for the next 10 years in order to try and uh, bridge the gap in terms of the, the, the skill shortages that have been identified. Uh, in my own area and in Christian Allard's area, the uh, oil and gas industry is currently experiencing a downturn with large numbers of individuals facing potential redundancy. Uh, in light of representations that have been made to me uh, by uh, haulage companies in my constituency, uh, most notably I had a meeting with uh, Jason Moyer of Dice uh, Carriers and uh, Bill Walker of William Walker Transport, based in my constituency, um, and in light of the, the discussions I've had with them, fa uh, coupled with the issues facing the offshore sector, I've written to the First Minister and asked whether the, the Road Haulage Association should be considered for involvement within the Energy Jobs Task Force. Uh, I believe that first and foremost our efforts should be to prevent redundancy within the offshore sector wherever possible, uh, but I believe also that if there are going to be redundancies taking place, we should look at whether there are opportunities that can arise as a result of that, which organisations like the RHA and the haulage industry could potentially capitalise upon in terms of uh, people potentially reskilling and retraining. And that brings me on to the point around training, and I welcome uh, the response I received from uh, the uh, Cabinet Secretary, Rosanna Cunningham, when uh, she wrote to me to advise that where uh, small businesses uh, can uh, apply for uh, up to £5,000 uh, towards employee training costs, uh, but also um, that uh, this would uh, refund up to 50% of each employee training up to a maximum of £500. The difficulty that's being faced by a lot of haulage industry firms is that in order for individuals to obtain employment, they need to have undertaken that training and passed their uh, HGV tests prior to becoming uh, employed by those companies. So I think what we need to do, and, and, and it's an issue not just for the Scottish Government but the UK Government as well, is we need to look at what support can be put in place where possible to support individuals, particularly individuals who are looking to reskill from another career to enter into the haulage industry, if there is support that can be provided to enable them to do so. Because £3,000 to cover training is not an unsubstantial sum of money, particularly if an individual uh, has either faced a redundancy or is looking to move from one career into another. 
<clears throat> that brings me to the point around the insurance point that, that I raised in the debate. And I think that the insurance firms absolutely have to be part of this conversation. If an individual is qualified uh, as an HGV driver, it shouldn't matter whether, whether they're 21 or 31. There shouldn't be age-based discrimination in relation to insurance. If an individual has undertaken the required qualifications but run the risk of potentially losing out on a position because it would cost more for the company to provide insurance for them, then that is something I think that needs to be addressed. So uh, I welcome the debate being brought by Chick Brody. I welcome the, the action that he's highlighted that is taking place. I think there's more that perhaps needs to be done in terms of some organisations who need to be brought into the bigger tent around the discussion. But I'm positive that there are opportunities out there. It's a question of whether they can be capitalised upon. Many thanks. Just before I call the Minister to respond, and for the record, I feel I must remind members that if they choose to participate in a members' debate, they should be available for the whole debate, and in the rare circumstances where that is not possible, then it is courteous to notify the presiding officer in advance. And further, events in this building should not commence until the business of Parliament is concluded. I now call on Annabel Ewing to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I welcome this evening's debate. And I'm grateful to both uh, Chick Brodie for securing the parliamentary time to highlight this important issue, and indeed to all those members who have participated. Uh, there have been uh, a number of, of important contributions uh, and very reflective and thoughtful contributions made this evening. I would also like to echo Jamie McGregor's praise for HGV drivers individually. I think that's a very important point to make. They do work very hard to keep Scotland's economy moving. Uh, and also, uh, I would say, presiding officer, that in this sector, uh, as in so many other sectors, we hear once again of the hands-on experience of our member, Christian Allard, uh, in terms of his former uh, life. Uh, former, he's had so many former lives, but one of them is a, as an HGV driver. So I think that adds to the, uh, the, the debate. Um, the Scottish Government does recognise the important role of freight as an enabler for economic growth. And so we must try to do what we can to match up the available opportunities in the road haulage sector with those who are seeking employment. And supporting individuals and employers to develop the necessary skills is an important aspect of this equation. Through Skills Development Scotland, we support people to do this through programmes such as the Modern Apprenticeship Programme. This is where we can add value, helping employers by contributing towards the cost of training. In fact, uh, for members' interest, there is already a freight logistics ME framework uh, in this area, uh, there is a public contribution available for four pathways across all age groups at levels two and three. Uh, and from 2011-12 through to quarter two in 2015-16, the total number of MAs here was 6,041. Uh, and in an additional standalone category at the time, driving goods vehicles, uh, a further 1,171 uh, can be added to that total. Uh, and the contribution, importantly, was available uh, to those over 25. Uh, as far as HGV licence acquisition and the EU driver certificate of professional competence are concerned, these matters are indeed, as members have said, reserved to Westminster. And so the general provision of funding for that is not within our gift. At the same time, members will be aware that Job Centre Plus has functions in Scotland uh, are also reserved. But notwithstanding these constraints, there is nonetheless an important role here for Skills Development Scotland to establish working collaboratively with industry uh, what the skills and training needs of the sector are and to offer advice and guidance to individuals seeking to work in road haulage as well as employers who need to recruit. And I would strongly encourage any employer, particularly in this sector, but indeed in any other sector, to engage with Skills Development Scotland at the earliest stage possible to address their likely skills and training needs going forward. In that regard, SDS has worked with industry and partners to develop skills investment plans in a number of sectors. They set out a clear statement of the sector's needs. They highlight the key skills priorities. And importantly, they include an action plan to address the identified skills issues and thereby ensure that education and training aligns with future skills needs. Uh, as Chip Brodie mentioned, uh, Skills Development Scotland are now working with the Road Haulage Association to consider uh, the skills needs of HGV drivers. Uh, and to establish a sound evidence base. So they have put out, in fact, uh, they issued their invitation to quote on the 6th of January of this year in respect of research aimed at gathering this key information. And it is hoped that a skills focused plan of action will be in place by the end of March uh, of this year. I hear particularly the pleas for the uh, livestock uh, haulage sector, and I will ensure that those uh, uh, pleas 
which were made uh, very comprehensively will be brought to the uh, attention of SDS tomorrow in the regard to the work that they are doing here. Um, it has to be acknowledged that the shortage of skilled workers is not unique to the freight transport industry and hence employers looking to recruit HGV drivers are in competition with other employers. So to be successful, therefore, employers need, I believe, to be proactive and have uh, an attractive offering. And in this respect, I welcome recent activity by the two freight, uh, freight trade associations, being the RHA and the Freight Transport Association, in their campaigns to increase visibility of career opportunities in the industry among young people, and in particular uh, amongst young women. As we have heard, there is poor gender balance in the road haulage sector, so there is a real opportunity uh, for the sector together to consider how they do attract more women uh, so they can widen the pool of talent available. And I would be, of course, happy to meet with Christian Allar to discuss the RHA campaign to which he uh, referred. Uh, I perhaps am too old to have seen the cartoon to which Mr Macdonald uh, referred, um, but uh, I, I think he has the genesis of a very good idea there because that is a means of communication and this is how you communicate the message that is very uh, important. On the issue of young people, um, I, I actually was speaking to a, 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 a large company that uh, uses haulage and is involved in haulage not so long ago and anecdotally they felt that the fact that the young person is not taken on fairly quickly after school is, is a problem because young people are then walking with their feet and they are choosing to do something else, to look elsewhere to get their training and to earn uh, a wage whilst they do so. So that is a problem, but at the same time I recognise uh, an issue raised by Davy Stewart and by Mark McDonald and others that insurance is a big obstacle. It's a huge outlay uh, and work I think really needs to be done uh, with the insurance sector as well to see what uh, reasonable uh, steps can be taken uh, in uh, that uh, regard. So it is clear that there has been a lot of activity. The Scottish Government works well with the uh, trade associations and also uh, works with the Scottish Freight and Logistics Advisory Group. Uh, much uh, debate has been taking place, including, uh, and again it was a point that Chick Brodie uh, referred to with respect to uh, work uh, to ensure that we do not lose what are in essence uh, in principle transferable skills of our veterans in the area of HGV uh, uh, activity and also indeed in many other sectors and Keith Brown actually held a meeting in December 2015 uh, with military representatives and it was recognised that our veterans have a number of key skills uh, and experience and the task at hand therefore going forward will be to identify both barriers and of course opportunities in facilitating access to employment for our veterans to ensure that their skill set is indeed embraced and not lost to the Scottish economy. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, I would like very much to thank again everyone who has participated in this debate. The Scottish Government recognises the importance of a skilled workforce and its contribution to supporting economic growth. It is beyond doubt that the Scottish economy needs efficient, sustainable and robust freight transport in order to meet growing uh, customer demands and to compete effectively in a global economy. And I'm confident that through the Scottish Government's well-established partnership with freight stakeholders uh, and others, we can work together, uh, as uh, stressed by Joan McAlpine, working collaboratively together to address the challenges that do lie ahead. But in addressing these challenges, we wish to make Scotland a place where businesses can indeed grow and flourish. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes Chick Brodie's debate, HGV driver shortages in Scotland. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.